Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40k Universe. I am your host Gershwan and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about the Imperium as we get into the tales or the mystery of the Beast of Solomon. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40k content every single day. And if you have any suggestions, comment down below. But with that said, let's get into 40 facts on the Beast of Solomon. Solomon is a slowly dying and heavily industrialized hive world where rebellion, superstition, and hate festers in the shadowed canyons of rockcrete and steel. Its hives are pollution-shrouded places plagued by superstition, greed, and unrest. Between the towering monolithic citadels of Solomon's hive metropolises, thousands of square kilometers of rusting pipelines, thundering processing vats, and fire-belching pyro towers cover the landscape and darken the skies with a thick haze of black smog. In the lightless spaces of these interior industrial zones, or simply the interior as the Solomites call them, many terrors are set to hunt unseen. Of these tales, the dark legends of the so-called Curse, or Beast of Solomon, is perhaps one of the oldest, most consistent, and most widely recounted. It is a story passed from generation to generation among the unfortunates forced to dwell in the workhouses and labor in the depths of Solomon's interior. It is a myth of some monstrous alien thing that stalks the darkness seeking only to kill. A shadow within shadows of good men taken without warning to death with only bloody shreds left to mark their passing. The beast is an envoy of death made manifest and a horror never fully seen, a thing lurking at the edge of the terrified minds of the populace. Yet the beast is no mere tale, but an ingrained fear that alone is powerful enough to move ordinary men and women to commit horrors in its name. Worst yet, the monster itself may be far more real and dangerous than the most imaginings of those bound by its terror can conceive. The inhabitants of Solomon have been consumed by their fear of the beast. They have no self-giving name, no title, and no organization. They are simply victims who have succumbed completely to their terror of what lies in the dark. But they are united by a single factor. They wish to placate and appease the beast, to preserve themselves by giving the beast its due, even sacrificing their own in desperate, appeasing worship of this emissary of death. Those not living a bleak life, cursed with poverty, disease and fear in Solomon's darkest places cannot understand the fear of knowing that the darkness is watching you and may take you if it pleases. Accordingly, most who make sacrifices to the beast are ordinary industrial laborers and families who are forced to live in the areas of the interior where the tales of the beast are the strongest. These stories are often backed up with slews of disappearances the discovery of bloody remains, and sightings of monstrous things stalking the shadows. To understand those who sacrifice to the beast, it is important to understand how these bitter and fearful people live. Buried far away from the light and wind in the depths of Solomon's interior, these zoners labor by Promethean lamps, drink water thick with pollutants that seep from the still stalks, and know that they are born and will die at the whim of greater forces be it the slow death sentence passed by the Imperium's thirst for the production of their toil, or the beast that stalks their dark world. The poisoning of Solomon by its own industries have brought other miseries that those forced to inhabit the interior bear the brunt of. Successful births are rare, and with each successive generation, a greater percentage of those born live only a few months or are touched by mutation. Those who sacrifice to the beast believe that their only chance to affect their fate is to appease at least one of the forces that prey on them. Around the areas considered to be the beast's hunting grounds, even those who do not seek to appease the curse with sacrifice know of the practice and keep their mouths firmly shut on the matter to outsiders. Thus they are complicit. Though some may believe firmly in the god emperor, they also know that they are cursed and that they must offer sacrifices to appease the beast. Those sacrificed are often outsiders who find themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. These offerings tend to be roving scum, minor officials, and those unfortunates who have been forcibly relocated to the interior to keep up the work quotas. It may even be the case where fear of the beast has grown so strong that an entire community has fallen to the sacrifice practice. The community's leaders may lure outsiders into their deadly web so that they can be offered to the beast in the dark. However, given the danger this possesses, 
the situation will be desperate indeed for this to occur. In other cases, sacrifices will be taken from amongst the local populace, the victims being selected by lottery or some dubious means of divination. At an agreed time, a bound victim is taken by a throng bearing bright torches to keep the beast in the dark away, their faces hidden by crude yet sometimes elaborate cloth masks. In a place where the tangles of pipes is thickest, the sacrifice is chained and left in complete darkness to await their fate. No one really knows what the beast is. To the spire nobles and guildmasters, it is a childish fable. The administratum scribes and hab residents know it as a chilling ghost story or a parable of how terrible life in the interior is. But to those doomed to live in the interior zone, it is very real and very deadly. Those scholars and adepts of the Holy Ordos who have taken time to study the stories of the beast in the dark have come up with several possibilities. However, until dedicated teams of investigators can be dispatched to Solomon to uncover the truth, these will remain only theories. The truth could be any or all their possibilities, or perhaps something else entirely. The most popular theory is that the beast does not exist in any literal sense. It is rather a figment of the imagination of the ignorant and superstitious lower classes on Solomon, invented to explain the bleak, hopeless nature of their lives. A mythical beast lets these people blame their troubles on something they can regard as concrete and tangible. More importantly, their belief in a literal beast gives them the misplaced hope that they save themselves through the act of sacrifice. A smaller subset of researchers have suggested that although the stories of the beast may be a myth, Something more than the polluted environment and harsh conditions is responsible for hunting those who live in Solomon's interior. They theorize that some arcane or even xeno mechanism from the ancient times may be responsible for these deaths. However, if either case is true, then the beasts cannot be appeased, hunted, or stopped. It would only likely be a self-perpetuating fear caused by the blight and slow death of this world. However, the beast may also be some strange, unknown external force, possessing reasons and purposes either too inhuman to comprehend or too wild to placate. It takes people in the dark, and as long as people are there, it will be consumed. As for those sacrificed to the beast, some may be taken, but most likely starved to death or eaten by rats. No matter how they end, their deaths are futile attempts to control something that does not understand the gifts or wishes of men. More exotic theories as to the cause of the curse include an ancient alien device buried beneath the surface that consumes life energy, or an ancient system from the dark age of technology that eliminates living things according to some inexplicable program perimeter, its victims rendered down by blade finger servitors or swarms of brass cased insects. It could also be some property of the materials used to build some part of the foundations of the interior of Solomon's complex causing people to slip out of reality and into the warp. It could even be the work of some ancient creature or xeno species that predates human involvement on Solomon, acting to preserve their secret existence. Several inquisitors suspect that someone is using and propagating the stories of the beast for their own purpose. After all, the population that lives in the depths of Solomon's industrial complexes are hidden, blighted people who will not be missed and are perfect cattle for others who need a regular supply of humans for some vile purpose. While the terrified dwellers gather around their chemical lamps and whisper about the beast, others watch them unseen, waiting for one to stray into an isolated spot so that others can do what they wish. To these quiet watchers, the whimpering offerings left in dark places are amusing and accepted gifts that do not dissuade them from their purpose. A vocal minority of inquisitorial scholars contend that the beast actually exists as some sort of creature that has been seen. It is described as a huge monster, part serpentine and part insectile, but utterly alien. This nightmare made flesh can wait with inhuman patience amongst the bleeding fumes of the still stalks and chem refineries for its prey. Blind, it is able to sense the slightest vibrations in the air and track the smallest trace of scent. It can stalk its prey for hours before striking its molten carapace, shifting color to match its environment. Targeting lone victims or small isolated groups, it kills as if its deep-bred instincts know that it must remain hidden. Once ready, it uncoils its talon limbs, propelling it swiftly forward with no more sound than the wind. 
Victims may catch a glimpse of its many rows of needle-sharp teeth, and may even manage to let out a short cry before they are crudely silenced, to be remembered only as part of another whispered tale. And those were 40 facts on the Beast of Solomon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it comes from the Dark Heresy books. Uh, I believe it's book two. Um, it's it's the one before the most recent um, Dark Heresy uh, book. Uh, but basically, the Beast of Solomon can be whatever your dungeon master wants it to be. Um, for all those that don't know, Dark Heresy is a role-playing game where you would have a dungeon master, just like Dungeons & Dragons. You, you uh, have a dungeon master, and then you pick... Um, usually, you're an acolyte of the Inquisition. You might get away with being some type of Xenos, but I'm not too sure. Um, but anyways, you would um, go on to these uh, missions, and the Beast of Solomon is one of these missions or one of these um, campaigns. Um, and really, the book, the Dark Heresy book, gave you the option or gave the Dungeon Master the option of having the beast be a creature, which what you found, which is what you heard at the end of the video, or it could also be um, a cult. Uh, I think there was a coronet cult, uh, that fits into it, and then there was um, some mercenaries that fit into it. Uh, so there was a variety of things that your dungeon master could do with the Beast of Solomon. Uh, I decided to go with the um, an actual like creature, Xenos creature, um, because that's what the the most interesting thing that I found in the book. Uh, Dark Heresy is I don't think it's a supported game anymore. It's not something that um, exists or has continued to be. Uh, it's not published anymore. Uh, I heard rumors a while back about a new uh, Warhammer 40k role-playing game. I started watching a bunch of YouTube videos on how to create a dun or, yeah, Dungeons & Dragons campaign. And one of the guys um, made a comment that Warhammer 40k was coming out with a book. If you guys... Uh, or a, a, a new role-playing game. If you guys know of anything like that, uh, please comment down below. I wonder if Dark Heresy is going to be that way. Um, Dark Heresy should be coming out today, actually, if this goes up on Saturday. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, hopefully we get some type of um, uh, campaign or, or role-playing ability on the Black Blackstone Fortress box set. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, again, if you have any suggestions for other topics of Warhammer 40k, just comment down below. If you have any questions, comment down below. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. It's because of all of our patrons that we've been able to invest a little bit more time in editing for our videos, which is why the, the videos actually look a little better. Uh, so if you want to support us, jump on over to Patreon. It's a simple dollar a month, and it helps us create better videos for you guys. If you can't, it's it's okay. Simply by liking, commenting, sharing on like Reddit or Facebook, it really helps out the channel when you do so. Uh, but thanks for everything, guys, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. This was Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate signing out.